welcome back in this lecture we will briefly touch upon a topic that is important for practical applications um, so this involves presence of three phases um, there is we already we're looking at two phases in a porous electrode that is a liquid phase which is an ionic conductor and an electronic phase which is a um, which contains a solid. Here, we have an additional uh, phase, which is a gas tube. So such kinds of system may coexist inside the porous electrode. Uh, the most common place where you see this is in a fuel cell. For example, in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, hydrogen and oxygen will combine to form water. So you have a liquid phase, which is water, uh, which is which will conduct ions. And then you have a gas phase. These are the reactants. And you also have the electronic conductors. Uh, what is important is you want to be controlling the uh, extent of gas and the liquid inside the porous structure. We will see why in the next lecture. So for now, what we are going to just claim is that this control, how much of um, liquid occupies the porous, the pore, pores inside the porous structure in the presence of gas is important. And we're going to just give some factors uh, which determine the extent to which liquid occupies the pore volume. All these things you might have already seen, at least this um, some specific formula, which is what we are going to relate to. So if you have uh, a capillary, uh, a narrow capillary, you do know that the rise inside the capillary is dependent on the radius or the dimension of the capillary. So there is a, a law uh, which connects H uh, to few other parameters, that is the extent to which the liquid ra raises inside the capillary to other parameters, the surface tension of the liquid gas interface, theta contact angle, which I will elaborate shortly. The main thing to notice is that H is inversely proportional to R. So if this dimension is small, if the size of uh, the capillary is small, the extent to which the liquid raises is large. Contact angle is defined in this following manner. So this is indicative of the contact angle. So there is the solid interface like as it is here. There is this gas as is shown here. And there is a liquid interface. So this is uh, in between these two, you have the liquid. So we have another formula. Uh, wherein we define what is called the capillary pressure. The subscripts W and NW indicate wetting, wetting liquid and a non-wetting fluid phase. So when the difference between the pressure here and the pressure here is the uh, capillary pressure, if theta is 90 degrees, okay, so you can look at what will 90 degrees mean. In that case, the pressure is, the difference between the pressure is zero, okay, that is, this will indicate a flat interface. Whenever you have a non-flat interface, you have a capillary pressure. So the important thing to note here is the capillary pressure is uh, dependent on uh, theta besides it being dependent on gamma and r. So what is the requirement in our case? So what we want is that um, we want, if you have a porous structure, we want uh, the liquid phase to fill the porous structure. Okay, So that is determined by this quantity. Um, which is called um, saturation level of um, a particular phase i. Okay, in this phase, in this case, 
uh, we are taking that phase to be the liquid phase. So what we notice is that in um, in the first sub the when the pores are being filled, uh, which are the pores that are being filled? So what we notice is that in the initial stages, okay, so the pores which are narrower, that is when R is small, these are the pores that are initially filled by the liquid. Okay, so this initial phase, um, um, I mean, these narrower pores get saturated with the liquid because the capillary pressure is inversely uh, proportional to R. So uh, you can also fill gradually uh, the pores that are la that have larger dimension um, that can also be uh, filled. In this case, the capillary pressure for uh, for when R is larger is less, but they can also be filled. So the most important take-home message is that the capillaries that are filled by the liquid are the ones that are narrower. So that is the main take-home message from this particular graph. In the next lecture, we will look at an important topic uh, which involves the three-phase electrode and how to think about um, the efficiency of a three-phase electrode. Thank you.